Hello, hello, and welcome on in to another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Matt. Today we are minus one crusader who is homesick, uh, but we are trucking along. We are joined today with the Pinhook and their inaugural Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. We are super excited to be trying this guy. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. All right, so like I said, this is the inaugural release from Castle and Key, the first one that's actually made by them in-house, released to market. All the other previous stuff was MGP. So I'll give you a little history on Penhook. Uh, first of all, it's the Castle and Key Distillery because it has a castle on the grounds and it has a uh, Paris style supported by Roman columns, which is their spring house. Actually looks like a key if you're looking at like a keyhole. What it really is is the old Taylor Distillery from 1887. It became dilapidated because I guess uh, it had been bought out by multiple distilleries over time. Uh, National Distillers just used a bottling line in the barrel house, and Jim Beam bought it in 87 just let it just sit there and waste away because that was the bourbon bust time, unfortunately. So when they got it in 2014, uh, which is Will Arvin and West Murray, it was a disastrous mess. So, but they decided they, they could spend, uh, they, they got the entire thing, which was 113 acres for under a million dollars. I think it's a pretty good deal for 113 acres and a distillery. Yeah. It may not be functioning, but, uh, 113 acres still. Still pretty cool. They spent $30 million to upgrade this thing because they want to bring it back to the former glory of when it was in 1937 when National Distillers had bought it from uh, the American Medicinal Spirits. So what they did is they hired Marianne Eves, who was the uh, head taster over at Brown Foreman and was in line to actually be the new head distiller when Chris Morris uh, retires. But she decided to leave and go over to them. And so after doing so, they started to do contracts and things out. You need money. So they had a 24 inch column still, and they also had uh, a doubler uh, pot. Let's hook up on that pot still. That's gin bath. That's so they make gin, vodka, the regular stuff. That's a ton of contract. They made so much contract distilling that they bought another 32 inch column still. It's a lot of freaking whiskey they're putting there. They're using the barrel house, which is the longest barrel houses in the world on the property, which was pretty awesome. So they've got two of those. And so then they hired a landscaper, apparently some world-renowned guy named John Karloftis, and they, he decided to replace all the overgrown vegetation, trees. They took them out by the truckloads, and they replaced them all with modern and then also Taylor-era uh, gardens. It's all beautiful now. It's these beautiful botanical gardens. There's a big walking trail he, uh, that's all over the property, so people get married there, beautiful weddings, all those cool things. So all 15 fermenters from the 30s are back in use. Both the barrel houses are back in use. The old coal-fired boiler system is now the centerpiece of the visitor center, which is very cool. Yeah. Old water um, tower still stands, but it's not in use, but it's there because it looks really pretty from the road. Yeah, but they're still, they're still using that, that keyhole where that paragolf for the uh, spring house is now still being used. So the same water was used back in the 1880s is the same water they're using now. It's pretty awesome, the same thing. That lime, uh, lime to aqua filter in there. So the creek well has been restored. So yeah, so they've really restored it. So, so that's kind of the history of where they've gone. So this, the actual pin hook is every year, it's bourbon and rye is chosen. And every year they do a different release, not based on flavor, but what the best barrels are at the time. So it's just, it's going to change every year. So every year it's something, which is kind of nice to get a new product every year. So it's pretty neat. So basically they take a few barrels, they blend them together. You get one bourbon, one rye each year. And so they don't try to replicate flavor, it's just whatever the best is at the time. So that's why they call them crops. So depending, of course, on the, what happened to the grains that year, what happened to the soil, all those good things. Are they blending it first, or are they just taking the best barrels and making a blend? Do we know? They're taking the best barrels and making a blend okay. of the best barrels, yeah. So, which is pretty cool. Um, so like I said, so prior, this was sourced to MGP. So this is their first one that's actually in Frankfurt. It's a two-year-old. The horse in the front is called Ride On, and it's crop 2020. And this is a 97 proof. Uh, it's non-chill filtered. I mean, they make it real obvious. Non-chill filtered. Non-chill filtered. They want you to know it's non-chill filtered. I mean, they got that down. But basically, one of the reasons that they do this every year, like I said, every year it's a new horse. So what pin hooking is, is that someone basically gets a horse, takes the maturity, and then when it's about ready to run, the thoroughbred, they sell the horse off to hopefully win some races. So that's what pin hooking is, and so that's why that term comes from. Uh, so every year it's a new one. So like I said, ride on's the name of this horse that's on here. So hopefully in a few years, maybe it'll win a Kentucky Derby. Who knows? Which would be kind of cool if it did. Heck, that bottle probably worth a fortune at that point in time. <laughs> but yeah, so this, so the new version of this, uh, like I said, this is their own. is a 60 rye, 20 corn, 20 malted barley. Um, it comes in at about $37, so it's, it's relatively inexpensive. And so... For pretty high proof too, right? For, yeah, for 97 not disappointed about that, that's no. for sure. 
All right, so let's go in there and tasting and after all the wonderful history of this distillery. This is predominantly rye. No um, doubt. You get mint, uh, a little bit of dill in there. Uh, this is absolutely new oak. I get vanilla and, and clove as well. There's okay. some fruity components as well, though. I want to say like uh, like almost peaches. Yeah, that's what I got. I got peaches. You got your rye, your mint, your anise. Mm -hmm. There's also that like that powder, the uncooked dough, the winter fresh, cinnamon, some yeah, some of that mint you get. Mm -hmm. Which is surprising for a two-year ride. I mean, yeah. minty rather than the usual straight uh, dill. Yeah, straight dill you usually get, which is really it, quite it has nice. Transitioned a little bit. So yeah, which is nice. Like I said, two years. I'm I'm pretty excited about this, especially this being their first one out of Castle and Key. I have tried their gin too. The gin's actually really good. It's a uh, whiskey drinker's gin. But yeah, this this smells really nice and quite different than the 95.5 they were using for MGP. All right, let's see how this tastes. Nice. A little young, but nice. Yeah, it's uh, obviously rye spice. Uh, eucalyptus, um, some lechardo cherries, that same doughy note. Mm -hmm. Also kind of sweet, like relish. Yeah. Not so much dill, but like, like a sweet relish, which is interesting. I don't think I've ever gotten that on a rye that I can remember. But it's got nice viscosity for being a couple years old. Yeah, it really does. Some, yeah, so like it's a toffee, winter fresh. It's also got like a clove on the finish, and it's ever it's very effervescent as well. Yeah, that black pepper is quite spicy. Uh, I, I would definitely say clove would probably be closer to it rather than just a black pepper ding. I think this would be good in a cocktail, too. Things would stand up nice. Things would probably stand nice to ice being at 97. Yeah. It does well. So let's see what the water does to this new rye. Well, we're letting that sit. You yeah, so your old rye. So we got. So we also grabbed there. We wanted to compare for you guys the MGP version, Whoa. which is the ninety-five five mash bill, so ninety-five rye, five malted barley. It's just bourbon and rye, and this one is a. Uh, this is a. This one comes in at ninety-three point five proof. This is a lot one, and this one's also twenty-four year month, twenty-four years old for MGP. So, so that smells like a 95.5 MGP. It's... Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not... I mean, I like the 95.5 mash bill, but it's completely different uh, what they end up making for their own product than this. There's an interesting uh, difference in selection. Okay. Uh, the drop of water in the new version dials down the proof spice, keeps most of the flavors really steady and level. Um, I prefer that with the drop. That's very, very yummy. Interesting. Yeah. What's this one... It's good. Um, I like it. I mean, this is, I like Pinhook a lot. You know, the regular old Pinhook from GP, good stuff. But I think this is a more unique rye. I think this, like, this is your standard, the MGP. This, right. this is really, a more unique rye. This is sure. more unique, and I think this is, this is going to smell well. The price point's good. Yeah. It's good stuff. I think a lot of wonderful it. flavors in there. Uh, there's more going on in this. There's more complexity happening in the new version. Agreed. Uh, there are fruity notes in there that were absent from the first. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just a dominant you know, rye note, it, it has a lot of complexity in there. Yeah, and we'll give you guys a full review on the old MGP at some point in time too, but we wanted to compare and get, get you guys this one because this is the more important one at the moment, so. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That's good stuff. So, yeah, yeah I'd say that's definitely something you should check out. You see it, totally worth it. I think you really enjoy it, so. Yeah. Price point's good for, yeah. for the product that it is. Exactly. Nice, nice so. proof, nice price. Absolutely. Well done, Pinhook. Yep, good job. Thanks, Castle yeah. and Key. Great job. Hopefully you got some more barrels sitting around, uh, aging a little bit longer. But, yeah, you know, and just see what then. your uh, bourbon tastes like, too, hopefully later this year. Yes, yeah. we'll find out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, keep on crocheting for the whiskey in your glass. Cheers. I like it.